Hi, unruly anime family. The story begins as a man is getting absolutely destroyed while training, and he fears that he will not survive. A group of onlookers are glad to see that he has improved over the past couple of years, and they determine that the upcoming E-Rank test won't be a problem for him. A while later, entrants for the E-Rank promotion test are registered. Our protagonist Drick is one of them, and the receptionist named Alika is happy to see him again. It's been two years since they last saw each other, and it was when Rick used to be a guild clerk. She was surprised to hear that Rick became an adventurer. And he can't blame her because starting off as an adventurer at age 30 is pretty unthinkable. Normally, people start off as F-rank apprentices when they are teenagers and become E-rank just two years after that. Alika wonders where he has been, so Rick explains that he was up in the mountains training with some senior adventurers. Some unruly drunk guy tries to make advances towards Alika, but Rick calms him down. Everyone's attention turns to them when the guy passes out, so Rick reminds everyone to drink responsibly. Alika gives him his exam ticket and wishes Rick luck on the E-rank test. Rick is horrified when his ticket has a really unlucky number of 4242. Outside, Rick tells some girl named Rianette that he finished registering, and she reminds him where her eyes are. Back inside, everyone is shocked to see an imprint of Rick's hand on the drunk guy's armor because it's made of steel. What's even more shocking is that the drunk guy is an infamous former A-rank adventurer. His name is Domal the Fiendish Knight, and he is a wanted criminal. Alika is then shocked when she wonders if Rick has become strong enough to easily leave an imprint on steel armor. A while later, Rick's height is measured and the examiners are shocked to see that he's 32 years old. After that, participants have their magical energy tested by putting their hands on a crystal ball. A couple guys get D minuses, and one girl gets an AC plus. Rick's turn is next, but the light he generates from the crystal is pathetic and he's given an F minus. <laughs> the others have never seen a score so low, and they hope they never end up like Rick. Rick leaves, but the examiner is shocked when the crystal ball breaks. The next exam has participants attack something to measure the force they can generate. The device can absorb insanely powerful attacks, so participants are told not to hold back. This device is a slime bag, and a look into the past shows someone teaching Rick about it. He was told that the human body is the foundation of a good fighter, regardless of what weapons or magic they have. Rick was instructed to destroy the golden slime bag with his bare hands because once he could do that, he would have built a body that he could trust. However, this golden slime bag is known for being as strong as a dragon's teeth. Rick was sure that he wouldn't be able to destroy it with his bare hands, but he was told that doing so is simple for an adventurer. His instructor revealed that he could destroy 200 at once and demonstrated a bit of his power. <laughs> Rick had to work his way up by hitting the bag with 50,000 pinches every single day. Back to the present, one guy impresses everyone when he attacks a bag using strengthening magic. Some little guy is up next, and he declares that the time to show his strength has finally come. This kid is the second son of the Duke, and rumors say that even though he's just 11 years old, he has magic equivalent to C-rank. This child prodigy then shocks everyone when he prepares his attack. His setup is truly a grand display, but everyone is shocked when the attack turns out to be a tiny fireball. <laughs> everyone is still impressed by the damage it does, and they call him a genius. Brick is in Nor as well because the kid used level 3 nature composed blaze magic. Another look back at Rick's training shows some little girl using an insanely powerful fire attack on him. Both attacks were blaze attacks, but they looked really different. So Rick wonders if the kid compressed his for indoor use. Soon it is Rick's turn, but the examiner doesn't expect much from him. If magic isn't trained at a young age, then the chances for growth later in life are impossible. On top of that, Rick's results from the magic test were pitiful, so the examiner recommends that Rick just give up now. Rick actually agrees with everything he said, 
but he can't help but think back to his training. Rick was exhausted from punching the bag one day, but he refused to give up. Rick acknowledges that he started his journey really late, but he believes that his age shouldn't matter. Because of this, Rick strikes the bag and shocks everyone when he absolutely destroys it with a single punch. Rick doesn't even know his own strength, as he wonders if the bag was just effective. Everyone watches in terror as they wonder who he is. The kid is furious at Rick for stealing the attention, but he plans to show off during the defensive ability test. Moments later, we see that everyone is shocked again when Rick defends against level 4 nature composed magic, something the kid couldn't even do. The examiner is surprised to hear that Rick only used level 1 magic to block the attack, so he decides to go up one level. For the next one, he will use level 5 attack magic. So the examiner suggests that Rick use something higher than level 1 defense magic. Rick then shocks everyone yet again when he reveals that he can only use level 1 magic on offense and defense. Rick assures the examiner that he will be okay. So the examiner takes offense as he believes that Rick is underestimating him. The examiner decides not to hold back and starts his incantation. He unleashes the level 5 attack, shocking everyone with its immense power and even some nighttime worries about it from really far away. His name is Sylvester, and he rushes to the arena because he can't believe such a powerful attack will be used during an exam. Sylvester is then informed about Rick and how he was able to block a level 5 attack with just level 1 defense magic. He assumes it must be some kind of joke, but he is told that it isn't. It's just an impressive 32-year-old E-rank adventurer. Rick's report reveals that he was a good receptionist for 13 years. Sylvester doesn't seem to know what a receptionist is, though, and Rick's power makes him wonder if it's a title given to someone who has defeated a dragon. After the written exam, Rick expresses how confident he is that he aced it. Just then, the prodigy named Freed angrily approaches Rick. Rick barely remembers this kid, so he assumes that he's lost and offers to help him find his parents. The kid is furious, though, and explains that Rick took all the attention away from him. Just then, Freed's older sister Angelica arrives and is upset that Rick made her brother cry. Freed says that the 40-year-old man ruined everything, but Rick angrily corrects him by saying that he's only in his 30s. Angelica only believes her brother and challenges the 40-year-old man to a duel. Rick points out that she just got her glove dirty. Rionette explains that picking up the glove means he has accepted the duel. Moments later, the two arrive in an arena, and Angelica declares that she must punish the old man. Duels in the kingdom allow each participant to propose one condition for the duel. Angelica proposes that the loser must act as the victor servant until the end of their lives, and her brother cheers her on. Angelica is a second-class knight, and Rick is shocked to hear that this means she's on the same level as in B-Rank Adventurer. B-Rank Adventures are powerful enough to defeat monsters on their own. Rionette still tells Rick to take it easy on her. Rick thinks she has it all wrong, and points out that he's just an F-Rank Adventurer who just registered a couple days ago. Rick fears that he won't make it out of the duel alive, so Riona tells him to just remember his training from the past two years. Rick begins to be inspired by the training montage that plays in his head, but he remembers how terrible it was and it just makes him throw up. Rionette tells him to be more confident and reminds him of the group that trained him. The group, called Aura Calcum Fist, prides itself on being the strongest on the continent, and they consider Rick to be one of its members. Rick thanks Rionette for restoring his confidence, and he steps up to Angelica. Angelica knows that Rick is an F rank, so she promises to refrain from ending his life. She prepares for the fight, and Rick can tell that she's a swordsman type that strengthens her body and weapons. Angelica wonders if he will be able to keep up with her speed, and Rick is shocked when she flies right past him. She explains that she slowed down just a bit for Rick, and she wonders if he's not talking because of how shocked he is. The little nerd laughs at the 40-year-old and explains that people call his sister the Flash because of how fast she is. Angelica declares that she will actually attack him this time without holding back, and she uses her incredibly fast attack again. Rick goes quiet again, but we see that it's actually because of how slowly he sees Angelica moving. It's even slower than when Rick walks, so he wonders why anyone would call her the Flash. <laughs> Rick easily dodges her attack, but Angelica thinks he just got lucky because only a handful of first-class knights are able to properly react to her speed. 
she is sure that he won't be able to dodge it a second time. But Rick is once again unimpressed by how slowly she is moving. He can't believe that she's a knight, and wonders if she became one through nepotism. Rick considers for a moment that he might actually be really strong. But he then laughs at the fort. Rick prepares to dodge the attack again, but Angelica trips and starts barreling towards him. Rick just barely manages to dodge her out of control attack, but Rick is oblivious. He couldn't read her movements at all and assumed that it was an incredible skill of hers. This little incident makes him remember that he's just an F rank and that there's a huge gap in skill between him and a second class knight. Angelica knows that she actually tripped, but decides to pretend like the attack was on purpose. She declares that she will attack again, but move even faster this time. Her next attack takes a great toll on her body, though, so she can only use it three times. She uses the attack that's supposed to be way faster, but it's still pretty slow in Rick's eyes. The clueless Rick fears that she might use another terrifying rolling attack again if he makes the wrong move, so he dodges carefully. Angelica is shocked and wonders what she should do because she can only use the attack two more times. She decides to use her last two attacks in succession, and Rick realizes that he needs to fight back. Just then, Angelica trips again on her last attempt. Rick thinks it's another terrifying technique and fears that his attack won't land in time. Dust goes everywhere and everyone watches in shock. When the dust clears, we see that Rick's attack created a crater in the ground. Angelica is horrified as she realizes that if she hadn't tripped, Rick's terrifyingly powerful attack would have landed on her. The clueless Rick thinks that she purposely dodged it, and she wonders who this guy is. Rick explains that he's just an f rank adventurer who used to be a guild receptionist two years ago. Rick isn't sure he can do much against a second-class knight, but he will do his best during their duel and use it as a learning experience. He excitedly prepares to continue their fight, but he is shocked when Angelica just surrenders. Fred is shocked as well, and Angelica says that she will let him win this time. She tries to get out of there as quickly as possible, but Rick reminds her about the dual conditions. Rick didn't actually propose anything, but he's fine with using hers. Angelica doesn't want to serve him for the rest of her life, so she asked her legs to exceed their limits just one more time and runs away. Rick doesn't really consider it a victory, but Rionette reminds him that it's time for the results of the preliminary test. Just then, Rick is shocked when Rionette reveals that the other members of their group will be arriving soon. The terrified Rick wonders why they are coming. So Rionette explains that they want to see how Rick is doing. Rick has a really bad feeling about it, but it's too late, as we see that the others are on their way. I appreciate you viewing my anime recap, Unruly Family. Please let me know what you think about the recap by liking, sharing, subscribing and leaving a comment.